details about advanced discipleship training. From the get-go, I would like to share with you that discipleship, as with many mysteries in God's economy, has two sides. Think of it as a precious coin. Side A of the coin, side A of the cross from Romans 5, 9 to 10, is based on Christ's death on the cross. Based on this, we remind people that they are forgiven, they are justified, meaning they are made right with God by the blood of Jesus. As Paul writes, much more than having now been justified by His blood, Romans 5, 9a. And based on John 3, 3 and 5 and 2 Corinthians 5, 17, we teach people that they are now born from above, thus a new creation in Christ. I can testify that we have observed more often than not that it takes time, years and years, until believers see 2 Corinthians 5.17 by revelation and experience as being true of themselves. Side B of the coin. Side B of the cross from Romans 5, 9 to 10 is about mentoring and teaching people in the way of the Lord. We do this based on Christ's finished work on the cross, His resurrection and His ascension. Now we can finish the verse cited from side A. We shall be saved from the wrath of God through Him. Romans 5, 9b. Now, the focus in how they are to live and walk as living members of Christ's body. Paul hits the nail on the head with these words. Therefore, as you have received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in Him. Colossians 2.6 In the process of discipleship, as part of our advanced discipleship training platform, Relatively often, we are admonishing believers to live from the inner source of life, Zoya life, the resurrected Jesus. I can testify again that for many Christians, this aspect of living from the inner source of life, Zoya life, is hard to understand. Instead of seeing themselves in Christ and working for God from a position of rest, their natural tendency is to do all sorts of activities for Christ to prove their worth before God. But this is not the real Christianity. Genuine Christianity is Christ in you. See Colossians 1.27. Moreover, real Christianity is Christ in unity. See John 17.23. Thus, ADT opens the door for teaching and guiding believers to walk in the percepts of Christ. His commands to love God and to love others from the inside out, not from the outside in. Discipleship, in a sense, is embracing the great commandment. Mark 12, 30 and 31. Love God and others. Obeying the great challenge, Luke 9, 23 and 24. Deny self and carrying the cross. And enrolling in the great commission, Matthew 28, 19 and 20. Making disciples. Our advanced discipleship platform is composed of eight distinct modules and extends over a two-year period. Below, it's a brief overview of the advanced discipleship structure. Module 1, the Bible, the foundation for spiritual growth and maturity. Here we are teaching the disciples how to read, understand and study the Bible from the grace perspective. It is so important for disciples to be able to feed themselves from the Word of God. Also, it is imperative that disciples don't stay on a milk diet for too long. See 1 Peter 2, 1 to 3. Because there is a great danger to become dull of hearing, see Hebrews 5.11. But instead, we admonish them to move towards solid food, see Hebrews 5.12-14. Module 2. Discipleship. The heart of the Great Commission. 
Here we teach the meaning of a genuine disciple of Christ. Disciple in Greek is matetes. Matetes, according to the Greek Bible scholar Spiros Zodiatis, editor of the Hebrew and Greek Keyword Study Bible, means more than mere pupil or learner. It means an adherer who accepts the instructions given to him and makes it his rule of conduct. In other words, a New Testament type of disciple is one who learns by putting what one learns into practice. See Matthew 28 verse 20. Not applying it is not believing it. See James 1 22nd and 23rd and chapter 2 18 to 24. We know that it was in Antioch that for the first time the world named the disciples Christians. Just because now believers are called themselves Christian does not automatically make them disciples of Christ. Module 3. Maturity. The goal of discipleship. In the Christian life, maturity is important. There is a difference between a child of God type Tegnan and a son of God type Huyas. Tegnan, the word used in John 1, 11 to and 12 means Actually, 11 to 13 means children. Generally speaking, in the Greek language, tegnon is the word used to describe an adopted child or a newly born child. On the other hand, huias, the Greek word used in Romans 8, 14, means a child who has been marked as someone's son or daughter because of the similarity between the parents and the child, similarity of facial features, and most importantly, importantly, similarity in character and attitude. In Ephesians 4, 11 to 16, Paul explains his theology of spiritual growth and maturity. In a few verses, Paul uses action words like equipping of the saint, work of the service, building up of the body of Christ, verse 12, attain to the unity of faith, attain the knowledge of the Son of God, attain to a measure to a mature man, attain to a measure of the stature, and attain the fullness of Christ. Verse 13. No longer children, full of insecurity, instability, and easily deceived. Verse 14. But grow up in all aspects into Him. Verse 15. Now, the spiritual body can function as intended by God. Paul writes, from whom the whole body, being fitted and held together by what every joint supplies, according to the proper working of each individual part, causes the growth of the body for the building up of itself in love. Ephesians 4.16. I guess we can agree with Saint Irenaeus, who said, the glory of God is a man fully alive. We all know that only the life, Zoe life of Jesus, according to 1 John 5.12, can make us and keep us fully alive. However, Christ said with his own lips these words, My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit, and so prove to be my disciples. John 15, 8. Of course, that we don't force ourselves to fabricate these fruits to prove we are such worthy disciples. That would be the product of superficiality, which leads to a surrogate Christianity. We bear fruit by abiding. Abiding its acceptance, cooperation, and a continual receiving of the life of Jesus flowing through us. See John 15, 4 and 5. Abiding, in a deeper sense, is a total abandonment in God's everlasting arms. See Romans 12, 1. Abiding is a childlike trust in the character and nature of of Abba Father. On the other hand, abiding is not passivity. We don't just cross our arms over the chest and hope in an automatic growth. This is deception. 
module 4 the flesh the major obstacle towards spiritual maturity here is the place where we challenge our students disciples to look deep into their own souls and identify those deep roots of adamic tendencies to live life independent of god now it is the time and the place for dissection of the flesh on god's operating table since theological speaking there are two major schools of thought this is the place in which we teach them about the flesh meaning the sinful nature and what is the real cure for it the cross as you know some Christians teach that believers have two natures the old nature and the new nature in a sense bad dog versus good dog type of understanding on the other hand other Christians teach that born-again believers have only one nature which is is the new nature but still struggling with the sinful nature meaning the flesh module 5 the cross the mystery of suffering that only a few embrace it here we teach about the real meaning of the cross it is during this module when all of the sudden their inner eyes are made wide open by the holy spirit regarding their own condition in their religious flesh during module 5 most of our students disciples have their own aha moments regarding their need for brokenness now they are ready to embrace the full work of the cross and experience the exchange life based on galatians 2:20. module 6 identity knowing who we are in christ the key to spiritual victory here we teach our students disciples about their identity now they are ready to fly like eagles see isaiah 4 40, 31 which reads like this yet those who wait for the lord will gain new strength they will mount up with wings like eagles they will run and not get tired they will walk and not become weary the meaning is that believers will experience the exchange of their weakness for the strength of god now they see the real meaning of the spiritual growth and maturity that we discuss in module now it is clear to them that the spiritual growth and maturity is the work of grace what was very difficult to comprehend before this point is making more sense now there is an understanding that everything in God's economy is by faith in Christ and after the Holy Spirit I love very much teaching this module module 7 free in Christ understanding spiritual warfare here we approach the domain of spiritual warfare. At this point, we feel comfortable that our students, disciples, have the necessary vocabulary, the language, and the proper spiritual syntax to deal with the prince of the air and with all of his host of demonic forces. See Ephesians 6.12. This is, in a sense, a climax in their process of spiritual growth and maturity. The students, disciples, are ready to take responsibility for the battle that it's being waged at the threshold of their minds. They are now ready to identify the missing pieces of God's armor, get trained and become properly equipped for the battle. They are ready to be enlisted as soldiers in God's mighty army of devoted followers of Christ. They are aware that the battle is not theirs to fight. It is the Lord's battle. Nevertheless, Nevertheless, it is their responsibility to submit to God according to James 4 7, resist the evil one according to 1 Peter 5 9 and James 4 7, while taking every thought captive to the obedience of Christ according to 2 Corinthians 10 5. I have a lot of fun teaching this module. Module 8 Fruits and gifts developing a genuine intimacy with the holy spirit here we are teaching the we are reaching the climax of climaxes intimacy with the holy spirit why do we read the bible to score points with god 
No. To get blessing here on earth? No. However, it may very well happen to be blessed here on earth as well. We read the Bible, we study the Bible, we meditate on the Bible because the author, the Holy Spirit, lives inside of us. This is the delight of every child of God who is indwelled by the living Christ to walk by the Spirit. John writes, but when he, the Spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all the truth, for he will not speak on his own initiative, but whatever he hears, he will speak and he will disclose to you what is to come. He will glorify me, for he will take of mine and will disclose it to you. John 16, 13, and 14. It is a known fact. We live in a divided Christianity. When it comes to the person of the Holy Spirit, in filling with the Spirit, being indwelled by the Holy Ghost, gifts of the Spirit, and other subjects like this, discrepancies widen. Therefore, it is a challenge to teach on this theme, but we teach it on all of these subjects anyway. Intimacy with God is not possible without intimacy with the Holy Spirit. The fact is, we are designed, we are created just for this, to walk with God in intimacy. Paul writes, if we live by the Spirit, let us also walk by the Spirit. Galatians 525. However, we cannot walk with someone without having an agreement with that person. Much more, we cannot walk with the person of the Holy Spirit if we have not completely surrendered our life to Him. When presenting the structure of the advanced discipleship training, it appears like hard work. I agree. It requires a lot of discipline. It is interesting how, in Latin, discipleship and discipline come from the same root word. I like the way Peter admonishes his readers to take the process of spiritual growth and maturity seriously. He writes, For by this he has granted to us his precious and magnificent promises, so that by them you may become partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world by lust. Now, for this very reason also, applying all diligence in your faith, supply moral excellence, and in your moral excellence, knowledge, and in your knowledge, self-control, and in your self-control, perseverance, and in your perseverance, godliness, and in your godliness, brotherly kindness, and in your brotherly kindness, love. For if these qualities are yours and are increasing, they render you neither useless nor unfruitful in the true knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. For he who lacks these qualities is blind or short-sighted, having forgotten his purification from his former sins. Therefore, brethren, by be all the more diligent to make certain about his calling and choosing you. For as long as you practice these things, you will never stumble. For in this way, the entrance into the eternal kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ will be abundantly supplied to you. Therefore, I will always be ready to remind you of these things, even though you already know them and have been established in the truth which is present with you. 2 Peter 1, 4 to 11. I can tell you that beside the passage from Ephesians 4, 11 to 16, the passage from 2 Peter 1, 4 to 11 is my second best text. Friends, I am always eager to learn how to market advanced discipleship training in a user-friendly way. Many times I wonder if there is a nice way to present the cross, the concept of self-denial and losing one life in order to to save it. Really, is there any way of doing this more appealing? With love in Christ's service. Vali Vaduva, spiritual mentor and life coach.